Good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast of Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN Weekly for Saturday, November 20th, 2021. And our top story today, Pwn to Own, common household and office products and devices are hackable. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Kevin Urso is the president of Connected Technology, LLC. Kevin, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Good morning, Jeff. How are you? Uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, you know, we're we're coming up to the holidays, so a uh, lot, lot going on. But, you know, you brought a story to my attention, and it just boggles my mind. Um, tell us about Pwn to Own, which is a conference that took right. place in Austin. Yeah, so there's there's a couple of these that go on. The, the, the one that took place in Austin, it was like November 1st, I think. That's focused more towards consumer, like cell phones, routers at home, which has become much more important now because a lot of people work from home. Um, so what it is basically is the vendors that make these devices um, agree to, to provide their device and they allow teams of hackers to try to break in. So the benefit to the manufacturers is that they learn about the potential breaches. And you know the agreement is the hackers are gonna get paid um, money to when they when they hack in, but they're also going to give the manufacturer how they did it. So the manufacturer mm-hmm. is going to in turn patch it before they release it out to the internet. So, so it's it almost is, like it's like a white hack hacker. Yeah, I was going to say it's like a white hat or hat or ethical hacker. Yep. Um, it, it seems like a great way to, to road test a product. And looking at the article you sent me, Sonos, HP, and Canon devices. So. Yeah. Right there, those are some very big brands, all hacked. Yes, yeah. Within, um, I think it was a four-day event, they hacked 61 devices in those four days, and they they're awarded basically a, a million dollars in, um, in, you know, awards <laughs> to these people. So you can see how, um, how open some of these devices are. <laughs> yeah, and, and just, just for the audience, in my um, understanding, the people that attend this, that are doing the ethical or white hat hacking, who are these? Are they kids? Are they people our age? Are they people older? I mean, or is it just run the gamut? It's a yeah, they run the gamut. Some of them are, um, you know, hacking organizations, you know, um, cybersecurity organizations. That's what they do. They look for these type of things, and they there are many other programs where you can, you know, Google has one, Microsoft has one, where you can sign up, and if you deliver them a, um, a breach that's at a certain level, there's, there's payments, there's a structured payment for them. So it's a way for these these groups to make a living, you know, doing this type of thing instead yeah, of selling it to bad guys. <laughs> I, I, I actually like it. It, it. You know, when we were teenagers, which was a long time ago, Kevin, yeah. uh, we all had a lot of angst and we all got into trouble, though I was not a hacker. But we all do different things, and I think this is a great way to direct right. some of that energy positively. Let me ask you this: uh, just with some of these brands, I mean, if I'm a consumer, if I'm someone who's buying office equipment, um, I run a business, a small business, a large business, or I'm just a regular person with a with a router in my home. What's my takeaway here? What do I need to know about what this event is, and how should I how should it be framed to me? Yeah. I think the most simple takeaway is anything that you plug into your network is a potential entry point. So you need to make sure that those those devices, as little as they are, you know, maybe it's just a thermostat, those things need to be able to be updated. Because as you can see, these these security breaches can come up at any time. You know, those devices that they provided were fully patched, you know up-to-date devices. So the manufacturers believe that they were good to go and they hacked them in four days. So, you know, the hack is gonna happen. Um, you gotta be able to update those devices as soon as possible. I, it, it is a, a cautionary tale uh, for anybody who's buying equipment. I mean, no matter how much security you have, you can never have too much. Right. And then 
What are some of the other things, just real quick, Kevin, in terms of, uh, you know, do you need to protect your ID? Do you need to protect your credit? Um, you know, do you need to protect your bank accounts if you're a business to ensure right. that if someone are to get in, you're always talking to us by about phishing and malware yep. and, ran, and ransomware. Um, what, what do we need to do to protect ourselves? You need to do it all. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that makes it easy. No, you cut to yeah. the chase on that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you definitely have to be, you know, phishing is still the number one way. Um, getting fooled to click a link, um, getting your, your password compromised are probably the, the number one things we see. So you have to um, use, again, use a password manager, something that's going to create a very secure, long, complicated password. Use um, two-factor authentication wherever possible, almost you know, all financial institutions at this point have some type of um, two-factor. Um, patch your machines. Um, you know, so those are just kind of the three main ones, I would say. Yeah. Well, look, I, we may sound like a broken record on this network, but that's because the, the tactics are the tactics. It's just like saving, Kevin. You yep. got to put money away incrementally over a long period of time. Start early. Time works for you. It sounds yep. like it's the same for hacking and preventing hacking. Kevin Urso, always a pleasure chatting with you. And uh, I learned something new, Pwn to oh, Own. Great talking with you and look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Great, thanks a lot. Thanks, Kevin. Great to see you. Thanks for sharing your perspective. And when we come back, we'll take a look at some of our best segments for the week. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned right here on BRN Weekly. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit Repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. On Monday, I sat down with Bloomberg Law's Austin Ramsey to learn about a cyber intrusion at a Missouri pension fund. Let's take a look. We've seen these large scale attacks on uh, city governments. You know, I, I, you mentioned earlier, you're from Baltimore. You know, the Baltimore 
city police department has been attacked on a large scale before by you know foreign actors local actors in some cases you know gaining access to huge databases that these that these government entities run um we've been waiting for something like this to happen and it finally has uh the public pension system for all of the educators teachers principals and everything in between for the state of missouri have uh it's been hacked and the way that it was hacked is is interesting a single email account just one employee of this public pension system in missouri um they clicked on something that they probably shouldn't have clicked on they didn't know where that went that downloaded some data uh onto that uh that worker's computer and for a few moments about less than an hour that actor had access to whatever that employee had access to now it's important to note here they did not gain access to any personal data that we know of yet of the full public pension system what's important about this is that it happened not necessarily how big of a hack it was but that it happened and that we know now that actors are targeting pension systems we know that this is going to continue to happen on a broad scale for you know huge public pension systems but we expect it also to happen at the corporate level as well you know private companies that have you know that that run public or defined benefit style pension plans for for big companies like delta airlines or american airlines all the way down to you know your mom and pop shop bagel shop that 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 may have a small 401k account we know that these these systems are accruing and have access to an enormous amount of money and we've been waiting for a while now for for actors to target these systems and it it appears that now they're doing so they responded quickly they knew that the system had been targeted they knew that the system had been attacked within an hour and they were able to shut that employee's account down before any bad actors were able to access data uh for you know public pensioners in the state of Missouri and that's that that deserves a round of applause that's quick acting and uh and, and it just goes to show in fact um how well you know the incredibly incredibly complex cyber systems that we have in in, in place you know in the United States and 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 around the world it it goes to show yes bad actors can use these technologies to access data but also we can design these systems to be safe or at least to alert us when something bad is happening. But but you mentioned something else that's really important here and 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 something that I really have targeted down in my my reporting is that this happened through one employee's um email account. And what we know about cyber attacks on a broad scale is that yes, you're right. Look, you know, the the Department of Labor, the federal government is doubling down on cybersecurity issues like never before. but the way that these bad actors are targeting pension plans or or really just you know your personal data on a broad scale is at the individual level they are sending out individual sometimes personalized email messages with links and people are clicking on these links and they are you know inadvertently downloading you know phishing software onto their computers that allows you know bad actors to 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 do a a world of damage to your personal data and and sometimes your personal life. And on Wednesday, Tesla's Betsy Mayat joined us to discuss all you need to know about student loan delinquencies. Let's take a look. Yeah, so uh due to the pandemic, about 85% of federal student loan borrowers have had their loans on hold and at 0% interest since March of 2020. Um that waiver has been extended several times but it, we know for a fact there is going to be no more extensions and so it's going to end on January 31st of 2022 at me, meaning that people are going to start being due for payments again um as of February of 2022. Well, because they haven't been charging interest, um it's not going to increase, you know, the result of this shouldn't increase people's payments and so on. Um what they should expect is uh they should already be getting notifications from their loan servicer to remind them that payments are going to be restarting and also explaining to them the different options they might have available to them in case their payments aren't going to be affordable come February. So it's really important for consumers to be doing right now 
is to make two things. Make sure your loan holder has all your correct contact information, phone number, snail mail, email, and then, and this can be hard, I'm, I'm guilty of this as well, or I should say of not doing this, open all the things that you get. O open the emails and the snail mails that you're getting from the servicer because there's gonna be some really important information that you don't wanna miss as far as deadlines uh, for certain things. So thankfully, federal student loans have a good number of opportunities for relief. There's deferments if you're unemployed, there's deferments if um, your income is very, very low. Um, even better, though, is that there's lower payment options. Some of them are based on your income. Some of them are based on your balance and extend the term or do sort of a graduated repayment. So there's, there's usually a repayment plan to fit most people's situations. Um, there's a calculator on our website, freestudentloanadvice.org, and the Department of Ed's website, studentaid.gov, that if you plug your numbers in, it will actually tell you side by side what your payment would be under each of those plans. So to help you figure out which one fits your budget. Granted State's a servicer that has decided they're not going to service loans for the Department of Education anymore. So those loans are already moving if, if it, they might even be done by now. Uh, the bigger news was uh, Fed Loan Servicing. Now they're the PSLF, Public Service Loan Forgiveness Servicer. They announced they were not gonna renew their contract and their contract was due to end in December of this year. But just this week, they announced that they did a year extension, um, which is good. It takes a lot of the anxiety away from public service loan forgiveness borrowers right now. And then the third uh, change was Navian. Navian has transferred its contract over to a, an organization called Maximus, um, which is another contract for the Department of Education. So that's another reason to make sure your contact information is up to date. So if you're one of these accounts that gets transferred that you get the notification to find out who your no, new loan servicer is. The consequences depend if you have a private loan or a federal student loan. Uh, for a private loan, um, you're at risk of late fees, obviously negative dings on your credit, and ultimately being sued by the lender. Uh, federal student loans, they have a lot of tools at their disposal that they actually don't need to go to court to get, so they can garnish your wages, they can take your tax refund, they can garnish your social security, um, negative, um, some pretty big negative impacts to your credit and collection costs. So, you know, people say to me, well, I defaulted because I couldn't afford my loan. Well, if you can't afford your loan now, you're really not gonna be able to afford it after it defaults when they've added up to 24% of your balance and collection costs. And that wraps up this episode of BRN Weekly. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the information in retirement markets, technology, personal finance, so much more, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. We're back again tomorrow for BRN Sunday. I'll be joined by members of the media, academia, and financial services as we analyze all the news for the week. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, Roll with the changes. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.